Youth has a face. A soft face, smooth skin, a certain roundness, not quite fixed or final. Later, the lines of experience cut in deep and the features set hard in the mold. But now, when the skin is smooth and the features are soft, the patterns of face and of spirit are not quite definite or permanent. This is the face of youth. And the troubles of youth are often not so serious as they seem because they can be handled with warmth and understanding before they have been woven into the permanent pattern. That's one of the most important features of a public health nurse's work. She sees so many babies and young children. She looks so long and steadily at the face of youth her understanding and sensitivity can help so much, can help ensure that the pattern, as it does evolve, will provide in its design for happiness, confidence, and maturity. The public health nurse is the uninvited but welcome guest. Her services are freely offered to those who need them and desire them.
diaper rash? That's fairly common, not too serious. It might be the type of soap used or the method of laundering. Whatever it is, it's comforting to have the calm reassurance of someone who speaks from considerable experience and training and who has visited many other mothers and babies. It's not only what you've come to see that you take note of. Sometimes there are other things that make you wonder just a little. Like why a mother should be so upset by a plain everyday squabble between two boys. the sort of thing you notice quietly and decide perhaps to find out just a little more about. A nurse and a teacher have a great deal in common. They both work with children. They may work in slightly different ways, but they have the same aim, to help children grow up easily and happily. And this is a subtle task. It requires a gentle hand and a sharp eye. An eye that can see how a child feels by the way he acts, the way he plays, or the way he draws a picture. Bobby Wallace, for example, how he wishes he could have a bicycle. Bobby had rheumatic fever last year and isn't supposed to be as active as the other boys. This one. This was drawn by Ralph Lundborg. Ralph, well, Ralph isn't as happy a child as he should be. Not that he isn't a good boy. Oh no, as a matter of fact, you almost get the feeling sometimes that Ralph is too good.
was unable to fight back. Can't let himself get angry at anybody. Just can't seem to let himself go. Then there are the spell downs. Kids seem to love spell downs. That is, most kids. But not Ralph. Somehow it seems as though every time there's a spell down, Ralph gets a stomach ache. And he's really an excellent speller. It's not just when he's with Alex. No, Ralph's troubles are his own, no matter whom he's with. But how about Alex? What kind of a boy is he? Alex? That's Alex. Alex doesn't mean any harm, but it's as though his energy spilled over from time to time. He doesn't particularly like to be scolded, but he's rather pleased that the other kids notice him and say, ah, smart Alex. Oh yes, Alex is a headache. But not only in school. Because a person is himself wherever he is. At home, at school, at work, or at play. That's why Miss Anderson felt she should visit Alex's home. Maybe Alex needs more attention. But when you have meals to get ready, clothes to wash, other kids to care for, sometimes there just isn't any time left. Miss Anderson can understand that. She can also understand what Mrs. Lundborg feels, that Ralph is a fine boy, a decent, well-behaved boy, but that something is not quite right with him, and that for a mother who loves him, that is disturbing. A community has a natural interest in its children, not only to protect them from physical danger, but also to protect them from unhappiness in adult life that could have been prevented in youth. One of the first things planned for Alex was that he be a member of the patrol squad. A good chance to use some of his surplus energy and be important, but in a cooperative way which didn't get him into trouble with the people around him. Sometimes you can even be destructive in a cooperative way. Alex's father found he could spend more time with his son, and he enjoyed it. A few little things of that sort eased life a good deal for Alex, at home, and at school. And they made Alex a happier boy. Because no boy wants to be bad. Not if he can get just as much attention when he's good.
With Ralph, unfortunately, it was a bit more complicated. Oh, not that there weren't things to be tried. Mrs. Reynolds decided when the next spell down was held that Ralph would be the one who asked the words. This way he could participate but not be upset by the pressure of competition. well the first time, would probably be all right once or twice more. But sooner or later, the other children would wonder why Ralph was always the one. And for Ralph himself, it was an escape from the problem rather than a solution. At best, it was a stopgap arrangement and could hardly be continued. Mrs. Lundborg wanted to help, but it was hard for her, being alone so much while her husband was away on business. Hard particularly because she didn't really know what was wrong. And nothing she tried seemed to help. That's why she decided, after talking to Miss Anderson again, to go to the Child Guidance Center. It's not me, of course. I understand. But Ralph says he's heard this is a place for crazy kids. And what did you think, Mrs. Lundborg? Well, I didn't know exactly. I, I tried Mrs. to... Mrs. Lundborg came to realize see, that a child I... guidance center is not a place for crazy kids. I didn't know. Not at all. It's a place for normal parents and children who have problems, which they are not quite able to work out. A place where people are helped to help themselves. Mrs. Lundborg came here on the recommendation of one of the city nurses. My first impression... In a child guidance center, social worker, psychologist, and psychiatrist work as a team. At this staff meeting, it was decided that the social worker would see Mrs. Lundborg and a psychiatrist would see Ralph. Yes, we have an appointment for 9 o'clock. All right, Mrs. Lundborg. Will you have a seat in the waiting room, please? Thank you. Mrs. Carroll, Mrs. Lundborg is here. Hello, Mrs. Lundborg. Hello, Ralph. Well, Ralph, what would you like to do today? I don't know. Well, look around, Ralph. This hour belongs to you. And you may do whatever you'd like. But what good will it do for them just to play in there? How can that help? How do you think it might help to play together? Well, I suppose you can tell quite a bit about kids by the way they play. Yeah, it's often difficult for children to say in words just how they feel, but they show their feelings by the way they act. Mm -hmm. 
During his weekly visits to the Child Guidance Center, Ralph did show his feelings. Oh, you thought like this. I think I'll try it. Oops. I'll pick them all up. You want everybody to think you're a good boy, don't you, Ralph? You sort of feel that you have to do everything just right. So yes, anxious to please. So anxious for everyone to think he was a good boy that when his hour was over, he was quite careful to pick up the toys he'd played with, pack them properly into their box, and return the box to its place on the shelf. And he said goodbye to Dr. Gannett just like a little man. But gradually, Ralph began to be less of a little man and more of a boy. See, this is my house. Hmm. Who's going to live in your house? Me and my mother. Anyone else? My daddy will drive home for supper every single night, and I mean it. How about the baby? No baby. Sensing that Dr. Gannett accepted him, not because he was good, but just because he was himself, Ralph began to be freer about expressing his feelings. I'm Ralph Dahlenberg. I want to see Dr. Gannett. Yeah, I've been here since a quarter two. That makes you angry, doesn't it, Ralph? Yeah. You're angry because I've kept you waiting. Yeah. Ralph had become so free, in fact, that his mother was rather troubled at finding her good boy growing difficult and unmanageable. She talked about this with Mrs. Carroll, the social worker, trying to understand what it might mean in terms of Ralph's development and her relationship with him. She too had become freer and was now able to talk to Mrs. Carroll about many of her feelings. As for Ralph, he did become difficult, even wild. But he always understood that he was at the center for a purpose and that there were definite limits to his behavior even there. Once Ralph had grown accustomed to expressing his feelings, to being a little wild when he felt like it, his energies began to flow into constructive efforts, which could be made in cooperation with other people rather than at the expense of other people. Having become a boy again, Ralph was now able to grow up as a boy should. And so the time came when Ralph was able to face a little difficulty without any longer being afraid of his own feelings. Just face it calmly for what it was.
not, as Mrs. Reynolds said, that she wanted Ralph to become a prize fighter. But she was pleased, even delighted, to see him able to hold his own. And that, after all, is our hope and intent in whatever community we live. That those of us who work with children, nurses, teachers, doctors, social workers, and those of us who live with children, parents, that we all work together, that by love and knowledge, with a sharp eye and a gentle hand, we help children to the happiness which is health. That we help them now, while they're young, while there is time.